so good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to uh, this panel on supercharging fintech in Northern Ireland. My name is Chris Jessup. I'm a partner at a and Goodbody, and I head up the fintech and financial services regulatory practice here in Belfast. And I have to say I'm absolutely delighted to be here, delighted to be asked to moderate this panel. Uh, very much thank you to Simon and the team at Digital DNA. It's so great to be back at St. George's Market and see a few people in person. Um, and of course, I'm particularly delighted because I'm joined by four such great panelists, uh, all of whom are very heavily invested in the development of fintech here locally. And so my role as moderator, I've been regularly reminded, is not to drone on, as I tend to do, and to, to let the panelists give you the benefit of their expertise. And so with that very much in mind, let me hand over to each of the panelists to give you a, a brief intro. So Carol, perhaps we'll start with you. Hi guys, nice to see everybody. I'm Carol Rossborough, founder and CEO of Esther International, and um, I've been part of the FinTech group. They've been a really big help. We're a young startup, young FinTech startup in Belfast. And um, yeah, these guys have been a, a fabulous network for us. So. And Roisin, coming on to you. Thanks, Chris. My name is Roisin Finnegan, and I lead Deloitte Ventures um, within Deloitte, and I'm also our FinTech SME. And I suppose I came on later um, in the sense that I came on board um, for the strategy piece within FinTech. Karen? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Bradbury. I am the financial services sector lead for Invest Northern Ireland. Uh, so I work to develop the sector here and also with colleagues overseas and also delighted to be working with FinTech and I have been working with the guys since the start. So delighted to be here today. Thanks. And last but by no means least, Andrew. Thanks, Chris. Um, delighted to be here. My name is Andrew Jenkins. I'm the chair of the FinTech Northern Ireland Association. Uh, I'm also the uh, HM Treasury FinTech Envoy for Northern Ireland, and I'm Director at Ardy, uh, Engineering at Ardy, a company founded by the Austria Corporation. Great. So as I mentioned, we're here to talk about FinTech. Uh, in particular, we're here to talk about some of the st key stakeholders and what can be done and some of the things that are already in train to really build on the momentum in a sector that has a reputation for just being world class in Northern Ireland. And so with that in mind, Andrew, I'm going to come to you first. You've mentioned your various hats, but I'm coming to you as you wear the hat of chairperson of FinTech NI. It's great to hear a bit more about the association. And so perhaps you could just give us a little bit of a sense of what it is that the association does and, and what its vision is for developing the industry here. So I'll maybe start with just a very brief history of the, the FinTech Northern Ireland Association. Uh, the association was founded quite recently, actually, uh, 2019, by Alex Lee and, and David Allister. Uh, and it's a not-for-profit um, industry association. Uh, purpose is to uh, really be the independent voice of the, the FinTech uh, sector across Northern Ireland. And it comprises of participants right across the ecosystem, some of which are uh, on the slide here uh, behind us. But we also have very strong links uh, through the FinTech National Network, which is a UK-wide network. Uh, strong collaboration partnerships with other FinTech associations right across the UK. Uh, and also uh, we have links with uh, FinTech associations uh, in global locations as well, Sacramento and California, uh, also in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and in Abu Dhabi. And I think uh, you know if we if we talk a little bit about the uh, the association, really what it does. Uh, in June of this year, the association commissioned a th a, a plan, and we did that in partnership with Roisin and her team at Deloitte. Uh, and really, what that plan was, it was a three-year a three-year strategy uh, to position Northern Ireland as a a leading uh, fintech fintech hub. Uh, so. We, we began that work in, in June, and that uh, that report has uh, has just been has just been published, and it came um, as a really important time at a really important time because earlier this year, uh, in February, in fact, the the UK government uh, published uh, the independent fintech strategic review, um, and that was commissioned by Treasury and run independently, 
And one of the really exciting things in, in that report was that Northern Ireland was recognised as one of 10 fintech clusters in the UK, specifically a cluster recognised for high growth potential. And one area of expertise in all that was, was RegTech. So we were particularly called out for our expertise in RegTech on some of the, uh, some of the, the technologies clusters as well, like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, big data and analytics. Thanks, Andrew. It's probably a really good opportunity, Roisin, to bring you in as well, um, given the involvement of your team at Deloitte, you know, a real market leading team has helped not only our association, but the association in, in Scotland. And I know the report that was published has an enormous amount of data and statistics and a roadmap to future success. But if you were to kind of crystallize a couple of the key messages um, from that report, what would those be? Thanks, Chris. So key messages, I suppose, um, look at the ecosystem behind us. The strategy was very much collaborative led. So we engaged with a whole host of of stakeholders, including Carol here from Esther, and um, we engage with incumbents like Allstate and Danska and those scale ups and technology scale ups and civic organizations and the universities to understand what's going on currently, you know, what is the state of play. Andrew just mentioned, you know, it is we, we are existing as a high growth potential cluster in, in the UK. So what what is out there currently? And really it was it was a hugely exciting thing to be involved in because you understand that actually building blocks are already there. We have fantastic things, as you're all aware, fantastic things going on in Northern Ireland. We've got a really healthy skills pipeline, a good education system from which we have thousands of graduates every year coming. And we have to ensure then that those those graduates are are are, are going into the right the right career choices. So we have the graduates, we have we have a good trajectory of, of, of startups and so on. We have an enormous amount of goodwill and a collaborative ecosystem that's in play. And I know I, I heard it mentioned there in a previous talk about how small Northern Ireland is, and we must use that to our advantage in, in terms of that connectedness. So you have these various building blocks. You have this really well-connected ecosystem that is demonstrated here. And I suppose the key message is then is to use those building blocks to create something that's really unique for Northern Ireland. So my colleagues um, in Deloitte um, have done this. They've done this. They've done this in the Isle of Man. They've done this in Abu Dhabi. They've done this in, in Dublin as well for InsureTech. And it's about we recognise that actually Northern Ireland has the potential to be to create something really powerful and really unique. And I think that is the key message in the sense that you know we, we could we will potentially be a global player in the fintech in the fintech um, system. We have all the, the necessary components to make this. And now, I suppose the next stage for us is to, to garner the, the necessary support and to really propel the strategy in, in, into real into being. I suppose so. Um, that's that would be the, the main key messages, Chris. No, thanks very much, Rishi. And I guess to both of you, with the roadmap now produced, what are the things that you're perhaps most looking forward to that could be achieved over the course of the next three years as we, we really try and build on that roadmap and, and achieve some of the objectives? Well, absolutely. I suppose some of the high level you know, figures were around job creation and inward investment, which I know Karen will touch on and so on. But you know, it, it's, it's to see that come to life. And I suppose in terms of the strategy at the moment, it's very much you know, on paper and it's to, it's to encourage that collaboration and it's to encourage the, the various stakeholders to get behind that, to really bring this to life and ensure that actually you know, Northern Ireland does put its place in the global map. and, and and make this strategy a reality in terms of those high-level figures around job creation and so on. Andrew? I, I think um, what is really exciting for me is it's, it's, not, just a, it's not just a strategy. Um, it's also a roadmap and an implementation plan because there's no point in having a strategy if there's no plan to execute on that strategy. And, and really, uh, what, what I think about what was really, really special about the, the work with, with Deloitte uh, was that we had a... We had stakeholder engagement front and center uh, at every step along the way. So even as we were developing the, the vision, the vision for what a you know what Northern Ireland's uh, world class fintech hub would look like, we were thinking about things like uh, world class innovation. We were thinking about how we connect um, better with uh, with fintech associations and fintech clusters right across the globe. Also, what we can do to support uh, more locally. The, the fintech community in Northern Ireland, and then also, what are, what are the, the broader societal benefits to having a you know a, a world class fintech 
uh, cluster in, in Northern Ireland. So starting with that vision, uh, making sure that we had stakeholder engagement in that vision, and then continuing that stakeholder engagement right through the strategy into the roadmap and into the implementation plan as well. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Rishin. So, Karen, I'll come to you next, because I and I plays a, a crucial role as a bedrock, really, that, that is part of this and sits behind a lot of the companies on the, on the map. And we've heard a lot about recent successes that you've had, but I think it's always nice to hear you know, what you believe are Northern Ireland's kind of unique selling points when you go out and, and discharge that role. I'd be really interested to, to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks, Chris. I guess we have, in terms of foreign direct investment, we have a really strong track record in, in FDI, in fintech. When you look at companies like Allstate, uh, Liberty Mutual, who set up their technology centers here you know, over 20 years ago, um, th that actually that has given us a real depth of talent in fintech. Um, and, and other work that fintech and I had done just before Christmas, uh, a research project, we actually, compared to other regions, or, uh, other regions of the UK, we have a real depth of uh, expertise and cluster around fintech, people working in the fintech uh, area, either through working in financial services companies in technology roles or fintech companies who are in startup and scale up. So we, uh, historically, and, and what has really underpinned our track record has been, first of all, people. Um, and I, I, when I say access to talent, I, I don't mean just a pipeline of people who come to, to, to work in those roles, but actually it's the quality of the people who are in those roles. And, you know, companies um, have said, well, we came initially on a cost basis or access to a pipeline, but we've stayed because of the quality of the people that are here. So that can't be underestimated. And the other thing that really does set us apart is collaboration. As Roisin mentioned, you know, we're, we are good at that. And sometimes I think we take it for granted, um, but, the, but our scale does help with that. And that is business to business, but also the universities and, um, and also the partnership and the, the desire from the executive to really underpin job creation and the economy here and recognizing our strength in that. But so I would say people and also collaboration and, and the real desire to work together. Thank you. And it, you, you've touched on it a bit there, but maybe we'll like expand this a bit further. The relationship and just how important FDI is to FinTech, but also in how it stimulates the growth of the ecosystem that we can see kind of expanding, you know, before us and on, on the slide behind you. Certainly, the, the, you know, the, when you look at companies like Allstate who are employing over 2,000 people, City or have 1,000 people working in technology roles in Belfast, that has really underpinned the growth of the, the fintech sector here. Um, you know, that depth of talent, that depth of expertise um, has, you know, sets us apart in terms of talent concentration. Also, what the, comp the large FDIs who are here are really good at is developing talent at, um, at graduate level. You know, they are recruiting lots of graduates and training them up so that for the local companies, then there, there's a potential talent pool of expertise uh, with, 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 you know, with um, experience as well, who they can then use to um, to train up or give a technology challenge, you know, that take them to the next, take, offer opportunities at the next level. So I think that it's been hugely important in developing the sector to date. I think it has a role to play in terms of talent development, at, certainly at, at entry level and really um, embedding that knowledge base here. Yeah, absolutely, couldn't, couldn't agree more. So Carol, coming on to you. I was doing a bit of research earlier and I came across a couple of quotes that are attributed to you. And then I got rid of those and just made a couple up. So, no, no. so I was reading a couple of quotes. One was, disruptive startups have the power to shape the world. But then I scrolled down a couple of paragraphs and saw failure is just be, is part of being an entrepreneur. I was trying to reconcile those two, but I could only imagine those are heavily based on experience. So having heard a little bit about FinTech and I, and obviously the work of Deloitte and I and I, I think it's really valuable to get the insights of someone who has lived and breathed at the coalface and that, and that you know, has really gone through 
a great success story with your platform. Um, so what has your experience been of, of starting a fintech business in NI, seeing it scale, seeing it expand into the US? I'd love to hear more. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think we, we sometimes have our head down in, in the grind so much that we, we don't tend to look up and think, oh gosh, you know, we have come too far. So uh, it's nice to be here today and to be part of this, this panel and hear about these rich ecosystems that are being built because certainly we have benefit, benefited so much from it. I mean, we won the um, Digital DNA Startup Competition two years ago, or the last time we were all here. I've lost track of time. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was a real moment for us. And you know, for us, we've had the, the, the benefit of the grant funding from Invest and I through Techstarts. So we did the proof of concept and the proof of concept plus, and then moved up into um, getting supported by the Angel Networks here through HBAN. And so we have been pulling on all of these resources right the way from the very beginning of this concept. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about what we do uh, before I go any further, uh, what, what we do is actually get donations directly from a donor through to someone in crisis using a prepaid card product and we switch off high risk merchant codes. So we switch off cash withdrawal, um, casinos, pubs, clubs, anything that seems high risk online purchases. And it really safeguards that donation for helpful household items like groceries, utility bills, rent, transport, school shoes, things like that. It seems like such an obvious concept. And yet when we put it out into the market, it was um, quite innovative and quite new. Now it took us quite a while to figure out uh, how do we go from piloting this from asking our friends and family to get involved, you know, hey, we have this idea, we want to throw it out there into the market. And I would say never start too small. So I, I got my mum convinced, you know, will you give me some money and I'll give it to someone in need. And then we got our colleagues convinced and then we got a couple of businesses on board that wanted to try this out. And eventually we had a little bit of traction. And, and from there, you know, the ecosystem just kind of comes around you in Northern Ireland. I would agree with you, Karen. You know, people see something even really, really small and say, go for it, you know, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. So we got a wee bit of grant money under our belt and decided let's move this up into the next level. And we went to the US and showcased our, what was at that stage a consumer product, getting money from someone who wants to help, getting it directly to someone verified to be in need through a local charity, a uh, women's shelter or a homeless shelter, and then giving you back an idea of where that money went to. Very, very simple concept. But when we took it to the US market, they said, right, we're a large foundation. Can we just buy that platform, see what you've built there and you're doing that locally? Can we just take that on board and white label it and put you know, large sums of money through it? So we took that back um, from our experience in, in New York, raised a pre-seed round off that validation work in the US market and said, look, we have some foundations that have given us early market indications that this is something that they would purchase and pay money for. We estimate that the you know, the crisis relief fund going through America is about 100 billion. So it's a huge market. There aren't a lot of products out there like this. And on that basis, we raised some investment. And from there, built out a more stable product. And we're now moving out into um, scaling this product across the US market. And we did all of that over COVID. So uh, the world opened up for us during COVID. You know, we would have found it extremely difficult to have a banking partnership put in place, plus have these meetings with large foundations and, and large organizations and building that trust, that, you know, because we're, we're a tiny startup in Northern Ireland, you know, run by initially two female founders. Um, and all we have going for us is, is building relationship, trustworthiness, telling people, you know, we're gonna be good to work with and we're not gonna lose your money. And we were able to do that over Zoom without spending any money. So once we managed to build those relationships, then um, it all started to pick up and, and move forward from there. But and ju just to finish off by saying, it really was the network. Um, the, the initial US network opened up through the Danske Bank FinTech Hub. They had some FinTech gurus from the US come over. We met them. They opened up a network for us and really mentored us from the US and, and pulled us into relationship with different banking partners over there. So. You know, the network that is with this fintech group isn't just local, it's also a big global uh, network of people that want to support businesses in Northern Ireland. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it touches on Andrew, you were mentioning some of those international collaborations, and it's great to hear those really being put to, to good effect. You made one comment there about being a female founder, or two, me, two female founders yeah, of a fintech company. And I'd be really interested to touch on that a little bit more and just hear, you know, have there been, do you think there have been opportunities or any particular challenges in your role as a female founder of a fintech? We have had no um, experience of being you know, prejudiced against for being women in the industry. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I think we've been given a seat at the table because of diversity and inclusion policies. They've opened doors for us, uh, allowed us to speak, and um, been, you know we've been given opportunity. So I would say as a female founder, take absolutely every advantage going. Seek out female founder funds. Um, I was joking with one of our um, recent investors this morning that we get invited to things because you're, we're women. That's okay. <laughs> Take the opportunity. You know, don't be offended by it. Um, people are making radical moves to have a more diverse people group, a, a different voice in terms of the fintech community. Take, take the opportunity. You know, there are certain investors out there that have funds specifically for female founders. Take the opportunity. So, yeah, go for it. Great. Well, I was very conscious of time, but actually, I think we probably have a few minutes. Um, maybe if we go one by one, just for any closing comments on kind of where you think the fintech landscape lies uh, and where the opportunities are coming down the track and how can we exploit those to really push what is already a very strong foundation. So, Andrew, I'll come back to you full circle if you have a few kind of closing remarks. Uh, I think for me, what is um, really important is we, first of all, we recognize our strengths uh, and we play to those strengths. And we've, we've had two ind independent reports now, the Khalifa Review, uh, which was UK government um, commissioned, and then the most recent uh, report that we, we published in partnership with Deloitte. Um, and both tell us the same thing, that we are really good um, at regulatory technology and that we have world-class technology clusters in Northern Ireland. And I think when you combine those, we have something that is, that is really unique. Uh, and I think we need to play to those strengths. Um, and I think one way we can do that is, you know, continue working on a proposal uh, that is with the UK government at the moment around establishing a world-class regulatory technology centre of expertise in Northern Ireland called, called GCERT, and that plays to those strengths. Now, there's a long uh, a way to go in terms of working out through government machinery, and that, that bid has been led at the moment by Innovation City Belfast, but with a large uh, stakeholder group around that, and I think that is both hugely ambitious um, but also hugely exciting for, for Northern Ireland to have that global center of expertise right here, recognizing our strengths. Right, thanks Andrew. Karen? Um, what I think um, is that this is a real opportunity. Uh, what I think is really exciting about the roadmap and, and the strategy, as Roisin mentioned, the building blocks are there and the desire to succeed is there, but what really for me is that it's industry led and it's you know an opportunity for government and, and government agencies to get behind the industry as opposed to kind of leading the way i think that that this is a really exciting time as andrew says we have uh, globally recognized strengths in, in different areas and there's opportunity to take advantage of that but the fact that there's an an, an industry-led association taking the lead in that um, that, that is really exciting and a great opportunity. Absolutely, and, and it's real. You know, currently 92% of all venture capital funds in fintech flow through London. That's equatable to about 42 billion. So when you look at those figures and you think that, that you know, the government has, has, has confirmed that they actually want that spread out you know, across the country, and, and 10 of these hubs have been identified, one being Belfast, that 92 billion is is real funds that you know could potentially be flowing through Northern Ireland if if all we've just spoken about comes into play. So it's it's absolutely tangible if if we can all work together. So I suppose that the key message for me is that of all the stakeholders we have identified and worked with over the past number of months, 
it's really up to us now to optimize that and to work together to to achieve that and to you know to to help grow the Northern Ireland economy. And Carol, last comments. Yeah. Um, and and I would say these guys are incredibly approachable, and I, I put my name out there as well. If you have any uh, queries, questions, you want to catch coffee, hear more about what resources are available for startups in the fintech space. Uh, do give me a shout, find me on LinkedIn, um, and also these guys as well. You know, there's there's a huge global network of uh, investors, advisors, mentors, people who understand banking, people who understand reg tech, and you know we do have that collaborative, um, fuzzy, warm feeling about us, as we've said recently. <laughs> um, do get in touch, and I think uh, when we pull together, support each other, make use of the resources and actually know that there are resources out there for uh, fintech startups and people who are scaling up within Northern Ireland. Uh, we're gonna see some major traction, I think, in the next 10 years. Yeah, get in touch. Great, well, thank you all very much for, uh, for attending, and it just leaves me to say that if you have any questions or want to follow up with any of us, we'll be mingling around, and we have contact details for the Fintech and I Association on the, on the slide who any, for anybody who wants to reach out uh, through those meetings. So, thank you. and. Thank you very much to the panel. Thank you. Thank you.